Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on data validation in Excel. Oftentimes in counseling research, we need to take data from assessments and correctly input it into applications like Excel so that we can prepare the data for analysis. Now we can just enter the data in to Excel or have somebody enter it into Excel for us and then after the data is entered try to find any values that fall outside of the range that's acceptable. But it's easier to set up an Excel workbook uh, or worksheet in this case that will alert the person entering the data if they've entered the data outside the acceptable range. And that's exactly what the data validation ability in Excel can do for us. So let's say that we have uh, a control group and a treatment group. We have 40 participants in that group. And we're using instruments, and let's say that we're measuring depressive symptoms. So we're using instruments that are targeted to measure the frequency, severity, and duration of depressive symptoms. And we have a pretest and then some intervention, and then a post-test. And we also want to predict risk level uh, for, say, success in a certain program, like a certain program geared toward treating depression. We're going to be using a T-score. The, the uh, depressive symptom scale that we'll be using will be converted to T-score. And we know that the vast majority of the T-scores will fall between a value of 20 and a value of 80. Because in a T-score, the mean is 50 and the standard deviation is 10. So to be below 20 or above 80 would indicate greater than three standard deviations, which isn't very likely to happen. So we'll select this entire column, the pretest column, and go to data data validation, and we're given this dialog. So first we'll set this up uh, for values between 20 and 80. So here in validation criteria, we'll allow whole numbers between a minimum of 20 and a maximum of 80. For input message, we'll just uncheck that. And for error, we're going to have it set at stop. So if an incorrect value is entered, uh, this will force the user to put in a value that's within the acceptable range. So let's try the validation as it's set up this way. So if we enter a 50, 40, 30, we wouldn't expect any error. Uh, down 20, still no error. But say we put in a value of 15, it comes up with this uh, default message. Uh, the value you entered is not valid. A user is restricted to values that can be entered in the cell. Now this is useful because uh, the researcher or whoever you have entering the data will realize that this data point was outside the range. Um, and click retry and maybe what they were trying to enter was 55 and they miskeyed and click 15. And of course this allows them to enter the, the value within the range. A more useful way to set it up would be for the title and error message to type in your own. So for example the title could be uh, value not acceptable and the error message could read, uh, please input a value between 20 and 80. So this gives the person entering the data a little more information in terms of what they did wrong to receive this message. So if we set this and now we use the same example and try 15, it's a little more clear. So again, they retry, 
and put in the correct value. Now you might be saying, well, it's possible to have a legitimate t-score below 20 or greater than 80, even though it's unlikely. And what you can do in that situation, if you expect uh, that there will be a few values below 20 or above 80, is you can change the stop to a warning. And what this will do, will this will allow the person entering the data to override the warning. So if we left this the same and we went back and we tried uh, 85, the, me the same message comes up, please input a value of 20 and 80, and you could change that to uh, something like this value is unusually high or low, uh, please double check. And it says continue. And if they click no, it brings them back. And, they, and again, it might have been miskeyed. They may have been trying to key in uh, instead of 85, uh, 58. Uh, or in the same example, they could select uh, yes, and that'll override it. And you can see it'll accept the value 85, even though that's outside the prescribed range we're looking for. That's because it's a warning and not a stop. So to give you some more examples over here in post-test, uh, clearly if we were doing a pre-test, post-test design, uh, this would be a T-score as well. But for the purposes of the video, let's uh, say that the post-test is a two-character code uh, that the assessment returns, like A, B, or B, C. We go to data validation, and we can select text length. We know it's going to be a two-digit code. And we could restrict it so it's equal to 2. We'll just leave this blank. We'll make this a, uh, make this a warning. So now, uh, if they enter AB, that should be OK, or BC. But if they have a miss key, enter ABC, it's going to come up with the warning. And in this case, maybe they wanted to type BC. Similarly, if they're trying to type in AB and just type in A, it's going to uh, give them that warning in that situation as well. So this, that's a way to restrict uh, text length to however many characters you want to appear. Now it should be noted here that you can also set the data validation to just provide information. So when the user enters a value that's outside the range you want, this is just an information dialog. It's still going to permit that value uh, to be entered even though it's not within the specified range. So what if you had a limited number of potential responses, like very limited, like say a list of three to 10 different responses, and you wanted the user to simply pick from that list? In that case, and let's use risk level as an example, go to data validation, and go to list. And then it'll ask you down here for a source. So I'm going to uh, keep this checked, ignore blank, keep that checked, and keep incel drop-down checked. That's a handy feature. I'm going to go to source and move over to list. I have a list over here on uh, this other worksheet up in the corner of low, medium, and high. Select that. And... Leave the error alert as uh, stop and OK. So now when you click into the cell, you can see there's a small arrow here. And it's going to bring that list up so the user can select from that range. 
So the user attempts to type in uh, data, let's say in this case, uh, hi, right? they, just, they just stop after two digits. It's going to stop that from occurring, that incorrect value from occurring, and they can simply go back and select, or they could type in the correct entry. That's also allowed. Of course, in almost every case, it's going to be easier to use this drop-down feature. So say that you were designing this worksheet for data entry, and you realize that in this, this particular uh, risk level, that you need a not applicable, but you've already entered it uh, in. You can go into, uh, and I'll magnify this a bit, you go into this list, and simply add, let's just say, an A. And then with the whole column selected like it, like it is now, simply going to reset the source. Now, we can go back and select it, but we happen to know that it was A133 because we can see that here, and we know we added to the end. So we can just change that to a 4. And now the NA option will be available. So whenever you are entering data from any type of uh, dependent variable, it's useful to have the data validation in place. It can save a lot of time being wasted on the back end as you try to track down invalid values because it'll ensure that the values are entered within the specified range. I hope this video on data validation in Excel has been useful to you. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.